Coming to you from the all-new Live House in Hollywood, California. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Consalos Plays. In just a second, you're going to meet two brilliant brothers from the Wonderland Society, Nate Rocket Wonder and Roman Jean Arthur. They work with Janelle Monet, a whole bunch of other talented folks. Just did the movie Antebellum. These are some bad boys. Uh, but first, just a note of personal preference. Um, I want to thank everybody for the overwhelming responses that we got to the tragedy we suffered a couple weeks ago with the loss of our stepdaughter, Tyler, my stepdaughter, Tyler, Nicole Moore. Um, your comments, your affection, your genuine care have lifted us and really made it um, something bearable, even though it's pretty unbearable. Uh, specific thank yous to our partners, Sweetwater, Nam, Leapwing, Awesounds, uh, Auto Tune, the Grammys, Groove Three, Hal Leonard, Harmon Carden, AKG. Uh, I could go on and on. We also have so many guests that have been on the show that all reached out individually to me, um, which were special. Uh, and then most importantly, you, our audience. Um, we do this for you. Uh, we've lived on your wings for a long time and you were there in droves and continue to be there. So thank you for that. And also in closing, I just want to say this. Um, Tyler was a fast rising mid-level executive at SoundCloud. I've been around for a minute and I just have not seen a company respond with more humanity, more heart, more graciousness than SoundCloud. They've been as concerned about us as Tyler's legacy uh, for a music tech company that, you know, sometimes are supposedly to be seen to be cold and uncaring. The exact opposite is happening. Carrie Trainer, you have put together a hell of a culture at SoundCloud, and it is impressive and uh, and has been very supportive of, of what we're going through. We're okay. We're getting there step by step. And so just wanted to thank you all for that. Um, now, the Sweetwater Win Your Wish List is on and popping. That sweepstakes is your opportunity to get $5,000 of gear that you've personally selected. How do you do it? Go to sweetwater.com, register your account, put in your wish list, and then pray. <laughs> pray that you get picked, because uh, I want to get picked, but I also want to see you win. You have until November 22nd to enter this great opportunity from a great retailer and really rock out your space. So, uh, uh, ice your wrist with this opportunity uh, and hurry up and get it done. You can hit us on our socials if you want to get in contact. You can see them right here. Please sign up for our newsletter, uh, like and subscribe. That's always a good thing. And now we had a great conversation with two guys we became instantly fans of, uh, Nate Rocket Wonder and Roman Jean Arthur from the Wonderland Society. Enjoy this. What's up, gents? Nice to be here. Thank oh, you so man, much. Oh, man, it's good to be here. Glad to be here. Man, it is our absolute pleasure. The the There's a number of elements that um, I think are around artistry, and we're going to get to some of the things you do. You, <clears throat> Antebellum just came out recently. You guys composed that or involved in that. The Wonderland Society is this amazing collective of talent and that do all kinds of different things. People likely know Janelle Monet as the sort of forward-facing person in it, but there's eight or nine of you all absolutely killing it. And we'll talk about that as well. You guys are brothers. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. on, on top of it. And so one of the things that I think is important for our audience is that you have to be free to get to your to, to get to art. You have to love art. You have to let yourself go. It feels like that thread runs through Wonderland Society and what you guys do. Am I close to talk? Yes. To me? Yes. Absolutely. The freedom you speak about is um, what normally drives us, 
And it drives us in various ways. Sometimes it's, it's a beacon and other times it's just the feeling inside of um, trying to deconstruct what you already know and build mm. something new and fresh. So mm. um, like there's the abandonment of what you know. There's the discomfort and really leaning into that discomfort sometimes to find out what it really is that you're trying to un uncover. Um, mm. So yeah, freedom does drive most of what we're trying to do, trying to find a different version of free. And, uh, is that your perspective as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think, uh, I think uh, that's always been a part of what drove us to uh, what drove Nate, Janelle, and Chuck to create Wonderland as a space for artists to really feel free. Uh, feel free from the constraints of, um, you know, the genres that maybe you're placed in by your geography, maybe by your race, or mm -hmm. maybe by uh, your education, mm -hmm. uh, and and just create a place where you know you can kind of dive into the the mysteries of well, what's really inside of you, and how do you uh, how do you break those uh, those boundaries and create something that really feels special and unique and, and feels personal. There's word out on the four hundred five. Uh, Nate, that uh, that you've got a past with, and it's not. I'm, I don't go to the street. I'm on the 405 <laughs> all the time. So um, I'm really curious about your NASA background. Did you really work on the Mars rover? Yeah, yeah I did. <laughs> That's funny you found that out. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was there working in the Trebo Electrics department, which is basically the department that sounds really boring, but studies like static electricity uh -huh. and yeah. so the reason that's important is because on mars it's a very dusty planet and so our department was in charge of making sure that the um that the static electricity in the air in mars because it's very dusty did not short circuit the rover so that was uh yep that was <laughs> that was the department i was in when i was there you got a quote. You got a quote that, that I just love. Uh, this is one of my favorite things I've heard in the last dozen shows. Uh, code is the true language of the future. Uh, can you can you expand on that? Because I, I think that's that's so true. So true. Yeah. I mean, I th I think one of the things that well, when you think about code, um, it really gets pretty simple sometimes. It can be very simple um at least when you think about like binary so mm -hmm. it's just like an either or situation it's this it's it's the way the universe splits itself uh all the time it's the decisions that we make and when you are building code that's basically all you're doing is you're making decisions you're creating if then statements and eventually you've created something that actually sounds like something or looks like something or feels like something um and so everything that we do is some version of some kind of code i mean from dna to you know everything else um so it's it's it is the future it also is the past as well and it's my fervent prayer that in schools <clears throat> excuse me in schools certainly in musical in musical education institutions and, and we're preaching it and putting together a group yes. that coding is part yes. of the fundamental yes. stuff. Yes. It makes yes. you such a weapon to all of our audience watching this. Coding yes. makes you a weapon in yes. so many sectors. Yes. You add Absolutely. that to your musical gifts in school and whatever it is Absolutely. you want to do, you become yeah. untouchable. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. You guys agree? Absolutely true. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No yeah. question. No yeah. Question. All right. So, so Annabellum. Yeah. You approach it. I'm a movie goer. Um, I, it's sort of it's sort of interesting to me when the world catches up to a culture that they admire but they only borrow from. Sure. So all of a sudden, mm. black horror. Uh -huh. it is interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. We've been horrified for years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's not new, but now it's become profitable. Right. So yeah. Right. yeah. So you've got Jordan Peele putting pressure on you and the weight of it and all that kind sure. of stuff. And sure. here's Antebellum and you're going to compose the music. What was the approach? Well, we really wanted to make sure that we we wanted to make sure that we took as much advice from composers that we admired and that we had built relationships with via other projects. 
uh, we wanted to take as much advice from them as we could. So we sat down with some uh, fantastic uh, collaborators like um, uh, John Powell, who we'd worked with before, Danny Elfman, who's a great friend, um, and, and uh, you know, some other people, Joe Trapanese, who we had just finished working on uh, Lady and the Tramp with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so these these guys were really instrumental in helping us to kind of get a framework for how do you compose a full underscore for a film? Mm-hmm. Uh, this being our first time really taking that on mm-hmm. outside of our own stuff. And uh, so, you know, we tried to just break it down into kind of thirds, uh, looking at, you know, first of all, like looking at this is kind of your reconnaissance phase. You read the script, you kind of understand the story. And then you look at what music that you've kind of already got or music that you might be able to uh, pull from, you know, that you've already got an idea about. And Nate and I always talk, he could tell you about, you know, we've we've always been, you know, keen on themes and like making our music, even the pop music that we've made, trying to make it feel like a movie. Yeah. And yeah, make make it feel like a theme, make it feel like it can be very cinematic, uh, even without the visual aspect. So, you know, that was important early on. Um, and then, you know, th- we got advice about the other phases and in, in terms of like, you know, you might want to have a music editor or somebody that can help you once you've created maybe like a suite of music. How do you break this down? How do you apply it to picture things that, you know, we weren't that well versed in? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we were, we were certainly glad to have help from those guys and, and other people uh, certainly along the way. Nice. Had you done other projects with the, the two brothers together? Uh, uh, seems like. I could be wrong. I mostly am. It seems like it seems like this is one of the first collaborations that you guys really look forward to together. You know, um, it, well, we worked together on we worked together before, about like, on, on things, but but I mean this in in this um not in this structure before, but de- you know for film, right. and I think that was like a different kind of take for us. Yeah, it was different. Mm-hmm. This was definitely a different process. Um, than, yeah. than for albums. Yeah. The thing that it feels like is, you know, as a composition team working on your pop music, on on albums, working with Janelle, so on and so forth. But as but as a team, new projects allow you to discover different things about each other. Yeah. See how that foments. Is that true? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's fun um, to, it, it, and sometimes that just means one of us is discovering a new sound and then the other one comes in the room and is like, wow, that's going to be good for yeah. that. Or, yeah. you know, yeah. we're trying a new software or we're like, oh, why don't we buy this thing over here to, you know, um, let's get our space echo, do it like this, you know, or whatever yeah. it is. It's just yeah. us having our discovery moments. And so we get to be explorers and then get to kind of, watch each other do that explore through that exploration process and kind of bring each other along wherever each of us is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And I will definitely say like an, a, a wonderful thing about being in a collaborative duo for a project like this, first of all, it's, your, it's our, either of our first time doing a major film. So, I mean, certainly be able to share the, the pressure, the anxieties and the joys, successes mm-hmm. of it is a wonderful thing. Uh, but then also, um, just being in a space, yeah, like where they said, where you can discover um, uh, 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 new sounds. And I remember I, I listened to this talk by Wynn Marsalis, uh, maybe back in 2014. We were at this place called the Idea Festival where he was giving this amazing talk. He was yeah. performing with Lincoln Center, live at Lincoln Center. And, um, and uh, he said, somebody asked him the question, like, do you ever get in a slump? And he was like, he thought about it for a second. He was like, ah, not really. And he went into this beautiful explanation of like how he see broke jazz down into three categories. But basically what he was saying was that like, if you're in a slump, like look at the person next to you. Cause the question, the pro, you know, the chances are they're not in a slump. And so yeah. being in a creative duo like that, you know, it was like, you, you share that burden of creating, yeah. you know, sometimes it'd be me, you know, and I can't yeah. come up with anything or like that blank slate at the beginning of a film can be kind of intimidating, but mm-hmm. you know, when you're sharing it, that's a, that's a huge thing. Yeah. No, I mean, I think Dave and I experienced that with the show. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> right? The ball yeah. gets passed yeah. back and forth. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sometimes we're both carrying yeah. it, sometimes yeah. not. But you yeah. find solace yeah. in that, and yeah. you can kind of relax in it, and then know that you can come back and just pick up where it is. Like, there's a right. there's That's an right. unspoken vibe and language that goes, mm, that goes exactly. back and forth. It's really the art of collaboration, but it's also kind of the art of love. Yes. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Okay. Hey guys, I'm gonna take a the liberty of going back a little bit. Um, sure. For my for the last ten years, uh, there's a line and and uh, we're far enough from heaven that I, I can't. I, there's one word I want to know, and it's <laughs> it's uh, there's a blank in your zipper and it wants to break out. Fill in that blank. There's a world. Oh, world. <laughs> Beautiful. That's Man, what I call it. You got some great lines. <laughs> There's a world that wants to break out. Uh, uh, What's up, world? Yeah, yeah uh, cook clean. <laughs> There's so many good lines in that song. You guys, you guys should redo it now, but and hip it up a little bit, and get a feature because that song is really good. It, 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 it's so amazing. So glad. So, so amazing, you. man. <laughs> You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, of something that uh, that could be on Stack On You, something that, that Outcast would do. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> those up tempos like uh, Heya and stuff. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. yeah. I remember where we were. There. Yeah, I remember where we were when we wrote that song. That was so fun. Chuck, I mean, I will just say Chuck Lightning on the lyrics is uh, always, it's a treat to just watch him go crazy. It like, really uh, is. It really you know, is. It's like, it's fun. <laughs> just go right at it. Yeah, like, man. Uh, the more aggressive, uh, higher pitch vocal at times, more, more ad libby vocal. Yeah. Who's, yeah. who's that? Uh, that, that, uh, that probably was me. I, I, I'm guessing it might have been me. I don't know. We uh, get in there and we just <laughs> act up, man. It's not a whole they lot. Crazy. We do whatever it takes we do. We don't do like yeah. several re records we just go in and we record it like it's live almost it's like i can see the lyrics for the first time and i just record whatever the lyrics are he'll like i'm just kind of going at the music he'll just be writing the lyrics and it just happens really most times really quickly it's kind of like it's just Mm -hmm. like a well let's just go yeah don't be afraid can can, 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 you know like like, like you're ripping off my into the lair, so I have the right to ask a, a favor. Can you can you do something like that again? I, I, I'd love yeah, to yeah, yeah, I'm sure we will. Yeah, Chuck and I were just working on a new song. I can't tell you the name of it because actually, but yeah, we're working on. We were just working on a new song this weekend. Yeah, right. how, musically, how does it work out? Who plays what? Who's the producer? Who do you guys mix? Give us a sense of how 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 musically it's spread between you both. One of us is usually taking lead on whatever the song is, and then the other mm-hmm. one basically comes in and is like playing the red team. Okay. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, hey man, let me fix this for you. Let me uh, fix your EQ here. Let me clean that up for you. Let me arrange this for you. It's like coming. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's a better sound for that. Or try this thing out right here. Love Let me it. lay down this melody over that right there. Whatever it is, you know, it's kind of mm-hmm. like giving each other space to lead. But knowing, like, right. hey, I can give you an objective opinion on this, and mm-hmm. we both trust each other's opinions. When they, when, when, I, when Roman comes in the room, he's like, "Try this." I'm like, "Here, go right for it." I know you know what's happening right here. Mm-hmm. And sometimes yeah. it just means that you're in the other room and you hear the song through the room and it through the wall, and it sounds better through, through the, wall, the wall. Yeah, it does when you walk in the room and you're like, "Let me <laughs> yeah. understand what the the good part is. The good part yeah. is the part that's <laughs> through the wall." Let me get you back to yeah. that right there. Cut out some of this other stuff you got going on. Give me the wall sound. Oh, I love it. I yeah. love it. It's I know y'all know something about that, Dave, mixing and, uh, yeah, mixing me and mastering. For me, it's the hallway. I do the hallway test. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. exactly. Okay. Sometimes, try this. Sometimes get some get some little tiny speakers like R tones, ref tones. Put them exactly. in front of you, under your desk, but facing away from you. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, there you go. That's a great idea. I love that. My big records, I, I check them on that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, a lot yeah. of times we was thinking like, I'm thinking like, how's this gonna sound in the club if you're not in the club yet? Right. Are you gonna want to right, go in the club right. more? It's right. gonna be like, yeah. oh, I can't wait to get in there. That sounds so good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but let me let me let me go down a, a different path that I think is sure. sometimes lost. That I think you guys absolutely you know you speak to in a way that's so cool um style has always been <clears throat> a big part of music and you can go back through history you know where you want to go you want to go david bowie you want to go 
Talking mm-hmm. Heads, sure. you want to go Earth, Wind, and Fire, yeah. you want to go Missy, yeah. Yeah. you want to go. Yeah. And yeah. I am telling you that the style of Wonderland Society just <laughs> kills me. Just, <laughs> just kills me. And you know why? Because it's it's part of who you are. It's effortless. It's, there's nothing put on about it. Mm-hmm. It, it is your thing, you know what yeah. I'm saying, and mm-hmm. yeah. it is. It's an inspiring thing for for music, and a lot of people, some people, get disconnected from that. But mm-hmm. you guys seem firmly rooted. In it. You know, like when you think about, and, and I'll stop pontificating here, but when you think about Janelle and what the way we see her, mm-hmm. that's not put on. That's no. that's that's in that's her, authentic who she is, in yeah. who she is. And that's yeah. why everything else is so authentic in what she yeah. does. Yeah. Same thing with you guys. And I, yeah. I hear it in the music. And then when I see it in the pictures and I put it together, I, you know, it's hard for black people to glow, but I, <laughs> but I kind of glow. <laughs> you know? That's great. So, yes. Is that true? Am I reading that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We, um, you know, taste, style all that comes into just uh I, I think it's just a reflection of who a person is so yeah. um yeah your taste reflect is reflected in your clothing your type of food you want to eat the books you read yep. the um songs you listen to the films you study yes the poems mm-hmm. you can recite the um you know all that so i think and 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 and, and the uh the, the the way you pray, the way you, the the um, your favorite colors, every all of that is kind of is all very connected to just oh, like making up who you are, and then you know eventually you get to this thing that's you, and you continue to gather and develop and you know, yep, allow it to grow. Yeah. I mean, that's what you. I mean, you think about like you said, Bowie, George, yeah, you know. Uh, Maurice and then like you think about like when I see Verdine, it's never <laughs> it's it's always Verdine. Hundred you know? percent yeah. all the time. Always. It's just always, always it's like you, you go find Janelle right now, she's somewhere probably walking around in a spacesuit. Chances yeah. are. Even if yeah. she's by yeah. herself, yep. That's her, you know, preferred way to see herself. So that's how Prince I, I, used to I, I, be. I, I, Oh, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Prince, bro. absolutely. Yeah, pr- exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. I remember no, I, yeah. We met Prince. First time we met Prince. <laughs> first time we met Prince, we went, <laughs> we went to his house and uh, it, we were we were just like, it was out here in LA and it was just like the spookiest thing because we went up like, it was up in the hills and like the fog and everything like that. And you just go to this like crazy cool house and like um we went down this hallway and we were all dressed as we normally were in tuxedos and uh we went down the hallway and the only people in the whole house were the band and they were down this long 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 hallway the end of the hallway (laughs) is prince and like just his band he is like hit it like right when he saw us hit the hit the bottom step he was like hit it and then they started going to this concert whoa so like they're playing and it's just like us our band and like his band basically and we're just watching them do the show like i mean you know six feet in front and uh maybe about like an hour into it he's like all right stop then he stops and he's like hey y'all how y'all doing and then he's like um give us one moment and this is like two in the morning this time already so he's like give us one moment they all leave out of the room they disappear for like 20 minutes, come back, and they're in completely different outfits. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we can't have y'all out dressing us. <laughs> oh, he was oh, like, nah, this- y'all came here <laughs> y'all out dressing us like that. Y'all came in here looking good. We had to get dressed up. <laughs> I mean, everybody came back in completely different outfits. It was like, yeah, all right, now let's go again. Oh, I <laughs> six, six, seven hours. That is hey, hey, uh, uh, amazing. Uh, I, I need some, I need some, I need you to put on your ITL hat for a minute on, <laughs> uh, on Dirty Computer, which is one of my favorite albums. And that's mm. lead off song. Dirty Computer is one of my favorites. What's that wah-wah sound on the guitar you have? 
Is it a Wawa or is it an Ottawa or is it a, an envelope follower? On the on the actual first song, Dirty Computer? Yes, yes. Is, I think, uh, monster, I think that might have been the Mutron. Oh, Mutron? Uh, Mutron Buffet? Was it the Mutron, Roman? It might have been the Mutron, mm-hmm. maybe, or something like I think it might have been the Mutron. It might have been. I love that sound. And then the Brian Wilson harmonies on that song. Oh, yeah. He yeah. just was so, he was so kind to do that. He just was really, you know, he's not, he doesn't really, you know, go out like that. He's much more, you know, but um, he was a big fan of Janelle's and they were like, you know, send over the song. And uh, if he likes it, you know, he'd totally do it. And he was like, he loved it. And it was like, yeah, I'd love to do that. So he got on there and just, it was just really sweet of him. That's all, really sweet. I'd like to, I'd like to challenge the audience to go listen to that record. It's pretty new. It's about a little, around a year old. And um, uh, Pharrell's done some stuff on it. Brian, um, yeah. a couple of other people. It's, it's a really, really, really great album. Thank you um, so much. Uh, but 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 uh, just wow. just the title, "Dirty Computer." Uh, you know, this this it's, it's so cool. But there's I could I could go on and on and on and on and on and on. Wow, that's uh, so yeah. kind of you. I mean, uh, really. Roman, I was telling him, it's so funny. I mean, like, we see his name every time we go in and, like, looking at our plugins and trying to figure out. I know, is. man. I know. Who, is, who got the priest? Your let's name comes up an air preset. Yeah, let's get a head <laughs> Yeah, bro. Let's go. Yes. It does sound bad immediately. This compressor, like, right, this EQ, this is gonna yes. Sound, yeah. That's so yeah. Cool. All the time, man. Yeah. And we're all on the same club. You know, we're all on the same club at the end of the day. As a vocalist, Roman, your influences, there, there's funk influences in there, mm-hmm. right? That that kind of yeah. sort of basis and then go from there. To how to, tell, tell me how that came about and, and what have you done with it to put your stamp on it? Man, you know, I mean, it just it just comes from um, growing up the way that we did. Uh, we, we grew up in um, North Carolina, but we we're really byproducts of South Carolina, North mm-hmm. Augusta, Georgia, that area. And mm-hmm. our grandfather in yes, particular uh, grew up in North Augusta, which is where James Brown is from. Absolutely. And so, you know, and being in that scene. James Brown. Yeah, literally. And uh, and we always had this deacon in, in his church called Mickey Murray, Deacon Mickey Murray. Mm-hmm. And we used yes. to get so excited Ooh. when he sang a solo yep. because he would be, he'd be like having James Brown in church. Like, he was crazy, man. Yep, right. He'd be killing yep. it. And getting like, and then come down from the choir stand and start, you know, like it was crazy. Yes. So anyway, that was like an early, like, you know, that coupled with like the spiritual nature of like how he was singing and where it was coming from, that mm-hmm. always just touched me deeply. So, I mean, I think all the singers from that tradition and you can go down the line, obviously, um, you know, from people like Prince and Michael Jackson, all these people that kind of uh, um, really, really, really grew from that same well, I'll say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, that was definitely like where I wanted to start or, or just where my voice sat, period. Mm. So, I mean, that's just like where my natural the richest tones. Natural. Like, yeah, yeah I don't necessarily have like a um, uh, I don't necessarily have like the pretty kind of like falsetto tone or like whatnot. Um, I have more of like a, you know, a baritone, you know, mm-hmm. half tenor. Mm-hmm. But like when I get up there, you know, if it's like a full voice thing, I'm all there for it. So, you know, that's kind of where it is. And then I think, you know, hearing it's funny because you talked about fashion her. And uh, the first thing I thought about was like uh, looking at that cover from the love below and looking looking at that album artwork, which like it yeah. was one of the main albums that I remember I always had in my truck when I was a teenager. Mm-hmm. I was 16 years old. And mm-hmm. It was like the one always in the disc changer. And I remember looking at that album artwork. And then hearing the music and then looking back at the artwork and hearing the music and just being like, man, he, he, he it's, it's not like Andre's like oh, an amazing yeah. singer, but his voice is so unique. And then looking at the way he was dressed and like what he was getting away with saying because of the way he was dressed and because of the way he was saying, <laughs> I just thought, man, it really is an important part of, yeah. of communicating like the language, the dress, yeah. all of it, you know. So yeah. much. So who it, could you hear it, this message from? you say what you want to say. Yeah. Who yeah. could you hear this yeah. message from? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Can I tell you a very quick, funny church story before we go to battle? Yeah, please. Class? All right. So I'm originally from Montreal, Canada. 
used to come in the summers to Kentucky. My oh, mother yeah. was mm-hmm. you know, super church people. So we go from Baptist in Canada, which means one thing, mm-hmm. to Southern Baptist <laughs> in Kentucky. Southern oh, Baptist. Oh, yeah, that's, a whole, that's different. Thing, that's right? different. <laughs> and, and I grew up in church. I sang in church. I had singing scholarships. All yeah. the time. I had to play. Yeah. Oh, let me find out. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's a whole other story. But so, but when I, I came one summer, I wasn't used to shouting. Right? <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm staying in a row with my mother and my sisters. And, and got to that hot point where the deacons and deacon and you know the the big women in the white stuff yep. with the fans come yep. through and and take care of. Oh my god! Somebody Ooh. in my row, a lady started shouting, and she threw the yes. hymnal right Ooh. down past my head. Ooh. And I'm telling you, I think. I, I don't know if it scared me out of church or into Ooh. church. Ooh. I, I, I had to, oh, I literally man. had to recover for about two weeks. But, man. But that coach, and then I said, Mom, I'm in. Like, and then we finally yes. moved to Kentucky and I just yeah. I, I lived in it. Yeah. It's a whole other oh, world man. and so much yeah. music comes out of this. So many teachings, so, so many. Yeah, it, 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 is, it, is, it is a hotbed. Yeah of musicality every Sunday, yeah. every Wednesday yeah. night, and every BTU yeah. and you yeah. know yeah. All yeah, that. you said, man, you BTU. got it. Bible oh, school, you know, man. BBU. BBU. Yeah. 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 I, I, mom would go snatch me off the basketball court. Herbie, come on, it's time to go to BTU. And then <laughs> I get right. called by all my friends. <laughs> I digress. Um all man. right, Dave, let's tee up a batter's box and do do your thing. I hope you can't hear my dog barking. Um, anyways, uh, Dave, you ready? So now we do this kind of as athletic thing. Dave's a pitcher awesome. and y'all are batters and there's awesome. no correct answer, but your job is to try to knock his block off. All right. Like, don't be gentle with it. Like just bring it. So Dave, you got some heaters? Yes. Yes, I do. Herbie. Um, oh, thank you, Davey. <laughs> <laughs> Loops. Splice. Vocals. <clears throat> Clarity. Janelle. Space. <laughs> I was mm. going to say space woman. Mm. Um, Morehouse College. Institution. Live drums or program drums? Both. Both. Strings. Cello. Yeah. The heart. Andre 3000. Funky motherfucker. Maurice White. Ooh. Yes. George Clinton. Crack Rock. Sorry, I watched Tales from I watched Tales from a Tour Glass recently. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I think about a song, a story Saul told me one time about. about I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna take a huge, huge risk here because I'm a little older than you guys. But this is an extra point question. Um, your favorite Carolina Beach music song? Oh, I don't know. Okay, I went to Clemson, and and uh, and so we would go to spring break. We'd go to Myrtle Beach and Ocean Drive, and there yeah. was a music back then in the, in the 70s called Shag and uh, Maurice Williams and the Zodiac Stay. It was a, it was a special yeah. music and it, it, it's, it's something that I get a little bit of in every mix I do. Uh, General What's-His-Name, mm. uh, 60 Minute Man, uh, Platters, uh, all those songs are wow. really part of who I am. Music. Really? The Platters? Yeah. yeah. Is, man, that's crazy. I didn't know yeah. the Platters. Wow. The... Uh... I, I, you know the audience. Go look up Carolina Beach music, and you'll you'll hear. A lot I will. I'm curious. Yeah, I definitely. I didn't know the platters were. I mean, I did, that's yeah. Um, let, let, I'm gonna let me just say, and there's so many other people that represent his interests. I wish that he had had Maurice White had the opportunity to meet you guys. Oh, me too. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, I we can really, tell we really you do. He would have just. Damn. He just sopped you up like like gravy. I, I, I'm man, your, your ethos is uh, the same. I remember one time he said to me, 
because he would talk with a little bit of a raspy voice. He's like, man, uh-huh. you got to open up and let the universe in. Mm. And it's it's just such the Wonderland thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm, so, I'm going to tell you. There's sometimes where I just listen to, um, and I, I listen to the, uh, to the, is it, isn't that's the way of the world? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Porn. And I just listen to that on repeat. Man. And it's just like, yeah, if it ain't no beauty, you got to make some beauty. And that's simple right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's it. Man, pull up the live records and, and listen to that. Now, but although okay. I'm going to throw a curve at you because I've got one extra batter's box question that's important <clears throat> before Dave wraps us up. So you ready? Yeah. This straw fedora or this straw fedora? The second one. Uh, it depends on where you're going. Are you going to Miami or are you going to Las Vegas? Good question. Good the question. second one reminds me of Big Daddy, though. He reminds me of our grandfather. Oh, it does. Yeah, you're right. That's definitely it's a summer hat. Yeah, fly. yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. I have not tried those out yet. When I knew you guys were coming on, I said, I'm I'm away. Yeah, that's that one. Yeah, I, I got this is this is Wonderland Society stuff, herb style. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I could <laughs> answer that question. <laughs> 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 so, um, we are continually blessed by talent that inspires us. Um, a lot of people give us whatever they give us a lot of praise for what we've done for a long time and how we do it. And we're always, we continue to be surprised and blessed by it. But the real truth is, is that Dave and I get inspired by meeting and knowing that one, the business is in good hands Two, there's absolute brilliance happening in ways that people don't know. Uh, If I had never met you guys and just talked to Michael, I'd have been cool. Like, like we just had, (laughs) we had just such a great conversation. Tweesha and I, Um, I am not only honored to meet you, I am a fan. I am impressed. I am blown away. I'm, ex- I'm excited about what you guys are doing. So thank you so that- much. Oh yeah. That's no. so kind of you. That's so kind of you to say that we don't take it lightly. We really appreciate and, that. Uh, thank we, you we, so we much. We strive to, uh, to, to continue to make folks like you proud and, uh, and, and to and stress the boundaries to- of what we can do. Absolutely. And, and, and as Michael will tell you, if you have a conversation with him, we're going to be doing some things together. Fantastic. All right. Oh yeah. Fantastic. 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 Dave, take us home. Uh, You kind of did a little bit of what I was going to talk about, but um, uh, you've heard me say before that the great music is a team sport. It's not a solo sport. Mm-hmm. And what what better teammate to have than your brother? And, and I was thinking back while I was uh, listening to the show, which I do sometimes a little too much instead of participate. But uh, uh, um, it seems like the, the, the brother shows, the brother uh, bands and groups, there's a special thing going on there. Now, it doesn't say it doesn't mean that you can't do it without it. But I just like that. I like the music that brothers make from the Almond Brothers to, to Earth, Wind and Fire to you guys. Um, uh, although, I, although one thing that's interesting about you guys, like 10% of all the bands in the world you guys are part of. Um, so you've got a lot of people to collaborate with, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's a joke>. yeah. <laughs> but don't go it alone, man. You know, um, I'm here because of the kindness and the help from dozens and dozens of people. It's not a, the top getting to the top. Not, I'm not saying I'm at the top or have been there, but getting there. Uh, you can't do it alone. You have to have help. Absolutely. That believe in you when you get in those like just horrible down moments uh, that, that creative people get into. Uh, uh, it's, it's hard for me to be serious looking at the upper left hand corner of my screen. With the, <laughs> my hat. I'll try. You're doing good. Uh, uh, he's, like brother, so he's like a brother to me, so so I guess right, I yeah. guess that counts. But. But don't ever go it alone um, and, and always try to reach out to people. Uh, we've all made the mistake of, of trying to suffer through quarantine alone. It did, didn't work. You just get you just get horribly lost in yourself and your own mind and thoughts. But I love I, I can see the love between you guys. I can see the competition. I can see the help. Um, when, when you when you guys are, 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 are quoted, you, you always uh, you guys are real brothers. And um, yeah. I think that that can, that can extend and, and get get like musical stepbrothers into in, in helping you out. 
Okay, guys. Uh, woo, great, great, great show. So, so happy. Thank you uh, so much. Uh, we really appreciate y'all having us. This is this really, is really this just is wonderful. Like they said we don't take it lightly. No. Nope. Right. And, and, and vice versa. You are welcome anytime. Send anybody, call anybody, whatever you want. Fantastic. You got some educational stuff that I would love to introduce you guys to who you guys should Oh, really? People. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got, Absolutely. I got plans. I, uh, okay. Fantastic. One, one, uh, last, uh, one last thing, Herb. When you get back from Cuba, bring me a, a, a ropa vieja, please. So. I've got one. <laughs> there we go. I got one. Say good night, Dave. Good night, Dave. <laughs>